Understanding your child's burn injury can be overwhelming, but we're here to help. No matter where the burn is located on the body, burns are measured by depth, and we refer to those as superficial, partial thickness, full thickness. Here's a closer look. Let's start with a superficial burn. This type of burn affects the top layer of skin, the epidermis. This layer is the outermost layer of skin, providing a waterproof barrier and creates our skin tone. A sunburn is a good example of a superficial burn. When you have a superficial burn, the most common things you may notice at first are skin redness, pain, and swelling. These types of burns usually heal within three to six days and do not require a lot of medical attention. The second type of burn is called a partial thickness burn. This type of burn affects two layers of skin, the epidermis and the dermis. The dermis sits beneath the epidermis. It contains tough connective tissue, hair follicles, and sweat glands. You will see some red or white areas of the skin, and you would expect some swelling, pain, and blisters. These can heal within a few weeks, and because they are deeper, can cause some scarring. Your healthcare team will help you understand all of this based on how deep the burn is. The third type of burn is called a full thickness burn. This is when both layers, the dermis and epidermis, are both gone. Sometimes these can go deeper and affect the hypodermis. The hypodermis is the layer under the dermis. This area contains tissue and is the storage site of most body fat. A full thickness burn affects all layers of skin. These burns look like a dense white area. Nerves are usually affected, and so these may be less painful to touch. These will take a few months to heal because they are deeper, and these will most likely cause some scarring. Your healthcare team will walk you through the steps that you need to take to help deal with these types of burns. As the wound begins to heal, it goes through a process called epithelialization, Epithelialization is the healing process of the dermal and epidermal tissue in which epithelium grows over a wound. As the wound begins to heal, you'll see differences around the area of the wound. Your child will also experience some redness, some itching, as the skin is getting back to its normal color. This is normal. Let your healthcare team know if your child's itching becomes excessive. Also, keep their fingernails short to make sure the itching doesn't damage the new formed skin. Burns can be scary for you and your child. Remember to notice any behavior changes and let us know. We have staff on hand that can assist with any guidance that you might need. My role here, I think, is to really support families and support the whole child and the whole family as they go through the process of having a burn injury and then recovery as well. So it's very, very normal and very common for parents to have concerns about their child after the burn injury and wonder, is this going to impact them forever? Are we going to have emotional stress after the fact? And what I say to those families is, yes, you will have some stress right around the injury and usually parents are already feeling a lot of that stress. But typically we don't see that prolonging into the future for very long. So usually families have really great coping mechanisms already in place. And so I have a couple tips that I just like to use to enhance those to get them over this very stressful moment. But I really recommend maintaining a lot of their healthy routines at home that they already have. So bedtimes, meal times, bath times, as much as is possible that the medical team will allow you to do, I encourage families to maintain all of those things at home. Often with little kids, we can't sit down and have a deep conversation with them about emotional healing. But what we do as parents and as adults is we show them with our behavior. So we say, something scary happened, we spent some time in the hospital, but you're healing, and so therefore we're getting back to bedtime, we're getting back to our regular meal times, those types of things. I also really encourage parents to let their children be kids as much as possible. So play is so important for kids. It's really the language that they, that they speak in. So letting kids have access to toys, have access to friends, have access to fun things outside if they're able, is a really helpful way that parents can promote their own child's healing and coping after injury. And the same lesson is actually true for us as adults too. And so sometimes it surprises people, I think, when I talk with them and say, not only should your child be playing and having access to fun, but you as a parent also need that. So I really like to take the approach of talking about it almost like it's a dose. 
It's a pill, it's a vitamin, it's your daily Tylenol if you wanna think about it that way. A little something, 10 to 15 minutes every day that's fun, that makes you feel like you have achieved something is a great way to prevent your mood from slipping down for a long period of time. So I'll actually get out calendars with parents sometimes and say, when is a pocket of time, maybe while kiddo is taking their nap or while your husband's putting the older one to sleep, that you can just take 15 minutes to you know, give yourself a pedicure or listen to your favorite song or call your sister and unload some of these stressors that you've been feeling. And those are important things for parents to heal as well. So healthy routines, fun activities for kids and for parents, and just knowing that it's normal to feel this upset, I think those are a great start to getting any family on the road to recovery. The most important thing to remember is to make sure your child is free to be a child. Let them play and spend time doing the things they enjoy. Keep their nutrition plan going as they heal. The high protein, high calorie diet discussed with your team will help them through the healing process. Pain medication will keep your child comfortable throughout their healing, so be sure to provide them as your team prescribed. Keeping your child as comfortable as possible during the healing process is important. The body heals better when it's not in pain. Also remember to follow the guidelines of the dressing changes prescribed by your team. Keeping the wound clean and changing the dressings will not only give you a good idea as to how it's healing, but will also assist with the healing process.